here's your host, Dr. David Reagan. Greetings in the name of Jesus, our blessed hope, and welcome to Christ in Prophecy. My special guest this week is Greg Pruitt, the president of Pioneer Bible Translators, a premier Bible translation ministry located in the Dallas, Texas area. Greg, welcome to Christ in Prophecy. Thank you so much. I tell you, I really appreciate you taking the time out of your busy schedule to be here. And I understand that you have been president of Pioneer Bible Translators since uh, what, 2007? That's right. And uh, before that, you were a Bible translator in West Africa for what, a dozen years? Or That's right. Decades, that. something like that. I also happen to know that you have a civil engineering degree from the University or Texas A&M University. That's right. And as a graduate of the University of Texas, I must say that it took a, you know, a real act of grace on my part to invite a Texas A&M graduate to be here. I'll try not to hold anything against you. <laughs> okay, okay. Well, let me ask you a question here, and that is, how in the world did an engineering graduate from, in civil engineering from Texas A&M end up doing Bible translation work in Africa? I guess it's, it's kind of a, a love story really because I met my wife at Texas A&M and she was really passionate about Bible translation and I was very passionate about her. <laughs> and uh, over time I <clears throat> just got drawn into it I guess. And, and, and what did you do? How did you get there? Uh, well we went off to Fuller Theological Seminary to study missions and scripture and then we did uh, uh, some work in linguistics at, in North Dakota and in Dallas and we headed off to France to okay, learn French. So, so first of all you did get some basic training in languages and linguistics and that sort of thing. That's right. Okay. And, and uh, in Scripture and Greek and Hebrew and these kinds of things. Too. And then your first assignment was in West Africa, an area where uh, I guess it had been under the French at some time or another. That's right. So you had to go to Paris first and learn French. That's right. We spent about a year in France learning French, which was about the coolest thing we've ever done for Jesus. And, uh, <laughs> well, somebody has to make those sacrifices. Somebody has to go then to those. Then on right. to West Africa. Right. And why was it necessary to learn French? Well, some of the people in this area speak French. The governmental language speaks French. All of the police checkpoints and interactions with the government, it's all in French. Okay. And so then you were going to actually translate the Bible, not into French, but you're going to translate it into a tribal language? That's right. And there people really honestly didn't speak French. Just a few people spoke French. Okay. So, but we could use that as a, a bridge to get into yeah, that context. You're going into an area where, uh, to a language you've never learned before. And how long does it take you just to prepare starting to translate. I mean, don't you have to be there two or three years to learn the language? It, it takes you about two years of learning the language. You go to the people who speak French and you ask for a few key phrases like, what is he doing and what is that? You walk around the village taking notes, what is that? What is he doing? Two years later, you're fluent in the language. Uh, that is if you have a capacity for languages. It, it helps. <laughs> it helps a lot. I mean, two years later, I would probably still <clears throat> be asking, uh, uh, you know, uh, how are you? How do you say that? <laughs> it's it's but, but not in easy. two years' time you can do that. Right. You walk around point and they say Bonkin Nine and you think, I hope that means house. I'm writing that down. Now, uh, now did these people already have a written language? They they did not. There were some missionaries had written things, but really they themselves had, had never really used it as a written language. So you're first of all putting their language into a written form. First you have to figure out how to write the language, and then they themselves need to be taught. Uh, to some extent how to read the language. Do you use Western al alphabets? Uh, we use uh, a lot of the international phonetic alphabet. Oh, phonetic alphabet, okay. And we also published in Arabic script as well. Is because that right? some of the local so people had Arabic and script. And then after two or three years you've learned the language and then you start the actual process of translating the New Testament into that language. That's right. right. And how That's long right. does that take? Uh, well it varies depending on the education of, of the people, but for us it took about twelve and a half, a little bit more than that, years. Twelve and a half years. It can take thirty and more years, depending. And then on once you get that, uh, you have the, the prospect of having to teach them how to read. Right. Well, we do that all along the way. All along first, the way. first day we were there, the the ladies of the church came to us and asked us to teach them how to read. We didn't even speak the language. Has computer technology speeded up the process of translation any at all? It has greatly. We have computer assisted uh, adaptation methodologies. We have all kinds of different. Uh, uh, it helps with Greek and Hebrew and uh, translation helps, all kinds of different. And do you often find that there are tribal languages in the same area that are very similar so that you can easily then start making the translation into another tribal language? Just similar enough to do an adaptation from our language to another related language. A lot of times it's a lot harder than it sounds, yes. but, but it's possible. Do you still get out in the field these days? I spend about a, a month each year 
in uh, West Africa. And you have to spend a lot of the rest of your time in administration and fundraising and that sort of thing? Uh, yes, I do. How many people do you have out in the field these days? Well, we have uh, around, we have about the same number of people in preparation as we do overseas. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, we have 300 people on our team total. And uh, we have between 80 and 100 full-time career, long-term missionaries overseas and a bunch of interns and other things like that. That is fantastic. Do these people have to raise their own uh, support? Uh, as, as do I. We, we all have to raise our own support. Okay. So they go to churches and that sort of thing? Get into churches, mission, individuals. Budgets? That's right. And, uh, and we, we look at this as a great opportunity for us to mobilize the church. And we believe that's why God put, made it this way, that we would need the church uh, so that the church can learn about their purpose to reach out to the whole earth. Wow, that is that is just amazing to 